Hi friends, greetings from Fin Study Club. Uh, this is Ankur welcoming all viewers to the session on activity ratios. Now, a prerequisite to this has been the overview, you know, a small session on overview of the ratios that uh, we have recently done. So, I hope that is already, you know, done and uh, understood. So, let's just understand what you mean by something called as an activity ratio. You know, it, it is there in the name itself. The ratios which talk about the activities of the form that are basically the you know activity ratios they are like I mentioned earlier they're very very operational in nature and uh, every industry will have a specific range of these ratios I mean for example if I talk about automobile and there I talk about working capital ratios then it will not be very very different from JLR versus Toyota versus General Motors of course, I'm not saying they're, they're going to be exactly the same, but fact of the matter is, all are manufacturing cars. So, you know, they will have common suppliers, they will have, you know, uh, common distributors. So, all said and done, it will not be a huge range. I mean, it is, it's going to be like a narrow range, it's like a pretty precise in that sense. Okay, so the activity ratios are basically tracking the company's operational performance and they try and assess you know the what's happening on the ground they're not financial as such you know they will not take figures only from income statement they will not give you the answers in percentages only they will not give you the answers in dollar terms so they are the they are actually the you know should i say the ceo's ratios if ceo has to review the company not from a profitability but from an operational excellence point of view so these are the ones that you calculate now, generally, there are, you know, a pattern of the ratios. I mean, I mean, there are turnover ratios. Turnover as in one full cycle. Turnover as in utilization. Turnover as in how well it is being connected with the sales. Because ultimately, sales is, you know, the main aspect of, of every company. So, here, the ratios are going to be turnovers that's a total asset turnover or working capital turnover now let me give you a way to remember them whosoever's turnover is going to be there it will have to it will be there in the denominator that's a inventory turnover so inventory is going to be there fixed assets turnover fixed assets are going to be there and all the numerators have to be revenue except two there are two exceptions to the numerator and the numerators here will not be revenue one is the payable for them purchase is more relevant and the other one is inventory for them cost of goods sold is more relevant for all others it's going to be revenue the second point that you have to understand here is that the purchase here that are being taken best if you are given the credit purchase the receive for receivable turnover the sales that you are being taken best if you are given credit sales. What you have to understand is that if a sale has been a cash sale, then the receivable never arose from them. It is only from the credit sale have you know the receivables come up. So it is absolutely uh, you know it it, it, it absolutely going to be a, a, a confirmed yes if you know you are able to uh, find out the credit sales also in the formula. And then finally, you know, apply it here. But yes, 99% chance in the exam, you will not be able to find the credit sales. In that case, as a proxy, I have no other option but to assume that the entire sales would have been credit and therefore, uh, you know, I take the annual sales and let's say the annual purchases. Okay. For all other aspects, for all other aspects, it's going to be like the revenue and better, better it is to take the net revenue. Net revenue as in? without your excise, you know, after all your discounts, uh, you know, all the indirect taxes and all that stuff. Okay. The last thing on the slide here is basically to convert a turnover ratio, which the answer is going to come in times, to something which is going to come in number of days. Now, what is that? Let us understand that in, 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 in a bit detailed. Imagine this is my one full year, okay, and there is something. Now I'm not going to explain that something. 
there is something which completes two full cycles within a year. So what is the duration of one full cycle? Pretty simply understood, six months. That something which I am talking about is nothing but CFA level one. So if someone asks me how many cycles does CFA level one have within a year, then that means he is asking about the turnover. How many turns CFA level one kind of experiences within a year? But if the same question is asked in number of days, I can I can quickly calculate those without any difficulty. You know, 365 days or 12 months, you know, depending on what is the answer that you want to you know give, divide by you know the respectable turnover two times. So two divide by this so and so uh, six is six months is what you know we have calculated. What you have to understand is the cancelling of units. Now please pay attention. This purchases would have the units, let's say, in terms of dollars. The trade payables would also have, let's say, the unit in terms of dollars. So all these ratios written on the left hand side, the unit will cancel out each other, and the final turnover is going to be in times. Let's say two times, three times, one point five times, whatever. So the unit that will transfer be transferred here in the denominator is also going to be in times. But the numerator here has a ratio. 12 months. If you want the answers to be in week, 52 weeks. And the denominator is in time. So denominator doesn't have anything to cancel out. So whatever is the numerator that you use here, the number of days, number of months, number of weeks, that's how you know you'll be able to calculate that. So in the exam, don't be you know surprised if they find you the turnover ratios in terms of the number of weeks in which case they are making a silent point that the numerator here has to be 52 weeks that's all okay now activity ratios are very closely related to the operating cycle as you know uh, the name suggests and there is a, a big logical connect and these are the two things that we have already done in your uh, you know, actually you have done it two times before. One, you have done it in corporate finance, working capital management and the other one that you have done in your balance sheet reading. Operating cycle was the time, number of days, stroke months. It is not the, you know, how many times is the circular. So, it is the days or the months that you take to convert one full cycle of the business. which was the days of inventory, so it was inventory holding period and the days of receivable so it was debtor collection period and cash conversion cycle as you would recall is the net operating cycle the net as in something must have been deducted from operating cycle what has been deducted so this is your operating cycle and you are deducting the creditor payment period okay so that's how you know these two have been built and they are also based on the activity ratios very very operational aspect to understand so I hope that this small session on activity ratios is useful. Uh, you know, you got to practice a lot of examples, you know, so far on, on these bases. And, uh, you know, I wish you, wish, wish you all the best. Uh, keep, you know, reading your core book. The, the understanding is going to be, you know, much, much better. For people who have not studied finance stroke accounting in their graduations, it is highly advisable that they should do ratios only from the core book. Okay. Uh, it, it, it is going to really form your fundamentals to a great extent. Those who have done these ratios before, you know, they have a choice. They have a choice. Okay. So, it was a, it was a good session. Uh, looking forward to speak to you in the next.